Hey guys, Glenn here. Today we're testing out the M5C by Anchormake. Is this the printer for you? By the end of this video, you're going to know if you want this printer or you do not want this printer. I'm going to go over the specs of the printer. I'm going to unbox it, show you how to put it together, which takes about three minutes. I'm going to show you the software that they use on the phone and the PC. We're going to see if this is a good beginner printer or can be turned into a print farm full of really cheap Anchormake printers. And we're also going to go over how they offer this so cheap which it's kind of surprising. Let's get into it. Now with the Anchormake M5C, you get quite a deal for $400. It's, it's a lot in this package. Let's go over it. Now they have their own software, which gives you easy multi-device control, 500 millimeter per second printing, 35 millimeter a second extrusion flow, 0.1 millimeter precise printing, 7x7 auto leveling, a full aluminum alloy structure, and an all metal hat end. Now, what does this all mean? It means that they're claiming a lot out of a printer that they're selling currently for $399. Now, let's unbox this bad boy and test her out. I'm going to show you how to put it together, and then I'll show you the software, which is pretty neat. All right, guys, it is finally here. Anchor make. M5C FDM 3D printer. All right, let's open her up and see what's inside. Assembly guide, power cord, bolts. This really neat kit. Oh, so it's pretty nice. is very nicely packaged. The first step is just simply take this panel off so you can access the screws. Now you simply slide it in and turn it over and then we're going to put eight screws in. Uh, it's surprising the instructions didn't really have many words on them. It's just pictures. That's how easy it is. Once you're done with the eight screws, you put this panel back on and then flip it over. Plug this cable in. Then the next step would just be putting this filament holder on. It also holds the tube and uh, it goes on with four screws. Very easy. And the last step is just plug this tube in. And then you're all set. All right, loading the filament. Don't do that. Do that. Okay. Don't do that. Do that. All right. Let's do the gray. Let's put it on. Now here is the app. In case anyone was interested in this, it's really neat. Um, this is me setting it up so you can use you know, all this stuff. You gotta give it access to Bluetooth. It needs a QR code, or you can also set it up a different way by simply just searching for printer and it'll find it within a second or two and you add it. Now, um, you can press the, uh, the button once in the printer that you wanna connect to. You can set up to Wi-Fi. You can name your printer. I'm going to name this M5C1 in case I have 100 of them one day. Next, you're going to set up what this button does. Um, so you can do make it the single tap, uh, print the latest file in USB. You can make the double tap, uh, print last file, hold for three seconds auto level. For instance, um, you know you can change it. These are the the options to change it to. Then you're going to set it up for when it is printing, what you want the button to do. This is what the app looks like. It tells you all the information that you need to, to know. And you can print right from it, stop it, start it, um, all kinds of things. It's, it's really neat. You can also move it up and down. Um, you can auto level it. Uh, in order to move it, you can click on like uh, one millimeter and 10 millimeter and 20 millimeter, how far you want to move it with one click. And then you click uh, the X and Y and Z. All right, here we are running the calibration. This takes a few minutes and then you are ready to print. It's got a cool little light here that uh, kind of looks like it's breathing. 
here we are on Thingiverse. Let's find a nice model to print this demon demonic kitten. Looks pretty cool. This is by Minishev and it's Creative Commons Attribution. Um, let's download this, print it up. All right, so this is Anchor Make Slicer. Um, you can also look at your devices here, which is pretty cool for print for our management, I'm assuming. Um, I, I'm guessing they're all gonna be, you're gonna refresh it. It'll all be on the left side up and down here and maybe a scroll. I don't know because I, I only have one of them, um, but that would be my assumption that you can manage your print farm here. Add the demonic kitten, click on it. I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. And then we're gonna need some support, so global support, which I'm assuming you can change the settings, but let's just see if it just works right out of the box, right? Now you're gonna put how much percentage of support. I'm just gonna global support. Okay. So here it is. That looks like overkill to me. I usually do like minimal support because I'm a print farm and I have to save as much as I can uh, and be as fast as I can. But the printer's pretty fast, so let's uh, let's see how it does. It's going to print this in 39 minutes and 7 seconds. Print. I know my ugly face is covering some of this, but... Alright, I'm going to press print. Current slicing settings don't match the current printer. Continuing to print may cause problems such as extruder jam. Are you sure you want to continue? Okay, I'm going to click no for that. What, what did I slice wrong? Oh. Okay. So... We just learned something together. It was on the machine M5. Click on the M5C. Oh. Slice it. Okay. All right. It's got support. These are the options here. Um, the only thing you're missing, you can't see with my head here. Hold on. That's what it looks like. But uh, the time is. 20 minutes 20 minutes let's click print and this is the printer it just beeped so it does beep every time something happens so you can look at the printer um, and it's not like an annoying beep it's not super super loud and it's loud enough that you can hear it in my opinion it's preheating showing you exactly what's happening here and then my app shows the same thing so pretty neat um, it'll show us what layer it's on um, it shows the print job it shows approximate time 20 minutes which is pretty cool um, the speed and down here so you got to scroll down I kind of wish it was in one thing but you know what it isn't one thing I just have it small so you guys can see it so, you could stop it and pause it right here. Let's see how it prints. I'll be back in 20 minutes. That is fast. I'm not going to clean up the extruder. I'm just going to see if it can clean itself. See what happens. That's this purge line there. This thing is wicked fast. Don't put your fingers anywhere near it. <laughs> My god, this thing is fast. This is real time. I... I I didn't speed it up. Oh my lord. I mean, you can see it grown in front of your eyes. I mean, that is wicked fast. Look at this thing. That's crazy. So, so far with speed, super impressed. But, let's come back in 20 minutes and see how it printed. All right, it says it's done. Let's go check it out. All right, little stringy, um, but this is my first print. And let's see how it comes off the bed. All right, the bed is still warm. I'm gonna let it cool down because it's not coming off easy. I wanna see if it just pops off like a Persia would. Okay, let's see if it comes off easy. Being cooled down, yeah baby. 
comes right off. I didn't even have to lift this plate. Good to know. And the adhesion was good. Um, this comes off pretty easy. So I didn't have to calibrate this or anything, uh, like myself. This is a lot thinner than I usually print that. Uh, it's a little harder to get off than like a Prusa, the way I have it set up, but works really good. Since this is kind of stringy, I'm thinking it's because the temperature was so high. I just left it on their PLA Plus like stock setting. Um, I'm going to make my own setting, print it at 200, which is what I usually print pretty much all my PLA at um, to keep it consistent. And see if I can get rid of that. You can see the layer lines. This is actually 0.25. I also, I'm going to make it 0.2, the layer height. So let's see, uh, let's see how the next one comes out. Alrighty, this is 0.2 millimeters high and uh, still a little stringy, but it's so fast, I think that just was going to happen. And it's not really dry film, man. This film has been <clears throat> sitting out for probably a good month in pretty bad uh, conditions. So, um, yeah, I mean, quality is pretty good. I'm going to clean it up and show you what it looks like. Okay, so I cleaned them up. I hit them with a, um, a heat gun real quick, but they're extremely small. Uh, you can see my finger right here. Um, that's how small they are. So, uh, extremely impressed by the speed and quality. The, the first one is 0.25 um, layer height, and then the other one's 0.2. And then I lowered the temperature. It didn't seem to really matter, um, but I, I just print with 200 all the time. So, uh, that's what I usually leave it out with this print, with this um, filament. And then this is the. 0.1 millimeter, which looks really, really good. And I mean, honestly, it looks a little messed up on like the top of the wing there, but it's it's very tiny. It's a very tiny print. So very impressive, extremely impressive, in fact. I also printed this Benchy, uh, in case you guys were interested in seeing a Benchy, because I know a lot of you guys are. I left that thing, because I don't know where that came from. But, um, you know, pretty, Pretty good quality, especially at this lightning speed, you know. A quick disclaimer here, they also sent me a bunch of their filament to test out. That's going to be a separate video. I wanted to test this printer with a filament that I was familiar with, so I really can test just the printer and not their filament all, all like together. I would expect with um, a filament right out the box, it probably wouldn't have been stringy like this. Because pretty much all my prints are stringy since that's the way I keep my filament uh, somewhat humidified. Now, how do they do it so cheap? How, why is this only less a sub $400 printer and it com competes with other printers the same quality and speed, however, it's cheaper? Well, it has no screen, which first threw me off. I was like, what do you mean no screen? I, I never had a printer with no screen, but they actually made it work pretty good. You can see when you first look at it, there is no screen. No screen but they do have this button right here. That is a customizable button to stop, pause, you can do a bunch of things with it, but you don't need anything but this. You don't need a screen, so they save a lot of money by not giving you a screen. And honestly, I haven't missed it using this printer the past couple weeks. Now, is this the right printer for you? Let's say that you are a beginner that just doesn't even have a printer yet, a 3D printer yet. Um, yes, definitely. It's super, super easy to use. In fact, it's a lot easier than like a Prusa. Um, the slicer, I was showing you the slicer in easy mode. There is an expert mode, uh, but easy mode makes it super, super easy. It'll be really easy to figure out. So right out of the box, you put it together in three minutes and you can start printing. Um, your kitty can start printing. It's a perfect gift for people. You know, it's extremely easy to use. It's not like the old printers. It is ready to go. So if you're just getting into 3D printing, definitely, definitely recommend this printer. It's uh, for it's extremely cheap and extremely good quality, and it looks like it's going to last a long time. I can't speak for the longevity of it because I've only had it a couple of weeks. Uh, but if I do have issues with it, I will post a video and I will probably fix it and show you how to fix it. As far as what my main channel is mainly about is running a 3D print farm and making money. Can you do that with this machine? Yes. Right now, as long as whatever you're selling fits on this bed, the quality and speed, especially for the money, under $400 is an amazing price. 
So rather than getting Prusa Minis, which I've had issues with Prusa Minis before, that's why I sold them all, I would try, and in fact I might even get more of these printers um, to, to see if it works as a good print farm, because the software seems to really do a good job with this. Some things that I hated with the software was like I couldn't press like R to rotate or S to scale and maybe I just didn't do enough investigation there but I couldn't really find any keyboard settings that would make me be able to slice quicker which I'm sure if it does not exist I'm sure they'll add that soon. If it does exist Anchor Make please comment down below so other people can know. So overall, I think this is a great printer, especially for the money. doesn't matter who you are. If you need a 3D printer that's going to be quality and speed, this is it right now. This is the one I would recommend at the moment. It is a really good bang for the buck. I mean, like, it's hard to believe that you can spend less than $400 and, and buy this machine. You know, years ago, this machine would be thousands of dollars. Now, for under $400. Incredible. Um, so... Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any comments, please comment down below. Remember to like that video. Subscribe if you like content like this or making money with your 3D printers. That's what I teach on this channel. You guys have a great day.